I'm Barbara Nevins Taylor. A lot of us use magical thinking when we look ahead to the 65 plus years. We hope that somehow things will work out. But a good many retirees are nervous about the future, according to the Employee Benefit Research Institute. And experts say we can reduce the anxiety if we begin to plan early. The sooner you start, the more choices you have. The longer you wait, the, the fewer choices you have. You lose your independence, you lose your control. Attorney Stuart Schoenfeld suggests you create a legal blueprint for the future. Whether you have a large amount of money or a small amount of money, there are certain things that everybody should do to have an, an estate plan. Geriatric care manager Joanne Lehman suggests your plan needs to cover the basics. Everybody needs a will, a health care proxy, and a power of attorney. You want to make sure that your instructions and your wishes are properly carried out by your loved ones. If you can't afford a lawyer, some states and local bar associations offer online forms. But be careful. Try to get legal advice. The AmericanBarAssociation.org offers a state-by-state -state list of clinics and not-for-profits. Many offer affordable and even free legal help. Studies indicate we don't start thinking about saving money for retirement early enough. Many wait until their 50s or later. We want people to start thinking at an earlier age to build up their savings accounts so they have as much possible to make it for our long years in retirement. Faye Riding of the MetLife Mature Market Institute points out that increased longevity means increased need. A 65-year-old man today has a 41 percent chance of living to 85. A woman, a 63 percent chance. That means we need money to keep going. We're going to need that savings to help us. As a, a three-legged stool, basically we know that uh, it's been built on the ideas of having a pension, which many people don't have, although some have a 401k, our personal savings, and Social Security. Social Security is our basic go-to benefit. Although you qualify at 62, it's suggested you wait until you're at least 66 to claim the monthly payments. If people wait for full retirement age, they get a significant amount more. And every year after that that they wait, they get an extra 8% up to age 70. So someone who qualifies to get $1,000 a month at 66 would only receive $650 a month if they start Social Security at 62. If they wait until age 70, it's $1,320 a month. Also, after 66, you can work, earn an unlimited amount, and still collect Social Security without deductions from the monthly benefit. If people, um, again, are thinking about their longevity, the later they can take Social Security, the better. Home is the next issue. For most, home sweet home is our biggest asset. If we want to sell to pay for assisted living or other services, we need to consider the consequences. The IRS code allows special exemptions for the sale of your house. They will allow a per single person to save $250,000 of the gain will be exempt and on a married couple will double that to $500,000. So people that have bought their homes years ago and have seen a large fluctuation in value need to protect the ability to maintain those exemptions on the sale of the house. Elder care experts suggest putting your home, stocks, and other assets into a trust. That allows them to for example, hold, live in their house for the rest of their lives, but at the end of their lives have the house pass on to their children. But tax experts caution against putting IRAs and annuities into a trust. That is a very large mistake because those assets, the gain that is built up in the IRA from all the years of having the pre-tax dollars funded, plus all of the earnings and growth during your life will now immediately be taxed. The trust is useful if you want to protect assets for heirs or if you or your spouse become so ill you need a nursing home and Medicaid benefits. Medicaid uh, requires you to pro provide financial information going back five years before the application. And if you've transferred assets to children or into a trust, in many circumstances, it will uh, lead to a penalty where you, there's a period of time you cannot qualify for Medicaid. It may also be possible for you to receive Medicaid assistance if you plan in advance. This is all complicated, but it's not rocket science, and getting a handle on it early may help you remain financially secure and independent for a long time.